Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Ami, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and are always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Elena. Welcome to What You Next podcast. Hi, Laura. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this podcast. I am so excited to chat with you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm Russian. I'm an immigrant. Um, English is my second language. My first language is Russian. I was born and raised in Leningrad, which is mm-hmm. now St. Petersburg, Russia, which is a gorgeous city. Um, I moved to the U.S. alone to join my husband here. Um, I left my mother and my older sisters behind. And um, all I brought here with me was a 40 pound suitcase with what used to be my life, my Russian mm-hmm. life. And um, I wrote a memoir. My first memoir was about that Russian life, uh, life behind the Iron Curtain in the Soviet Union. It was called The Mountain of Crumbs. And in the second memoir, Russian Tattoo, I described my life in the United States, the life of an immigrant, just a recent immigrant who didn't know anything about the US or its culture or its people. And it was really, it's really about culture shock. Um, I came here from literally behind the Iron Curtain. Mm -hmm. So I I knew nothing about this country. I knew nothing about its people, about its culture, about anything, basically. We we were cut off all information. So um, in the second memoir, it's it's about this um, silly mistakes of not knowing what to do, what to expect, what to say, not knowing anything about the culture. And it took me a long time to get over this culture shock, but eventually um, I adapted. And um, now um, I feel much more comfortable about my life here and I'm not as afraid to make a mistake. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I I imagine this is such a culture shock coming from the Soviet Union to coming to America and then seeing like and the expectations that you should know it all, you know? Oh. There's like, there's an expectation that everyone should know English. It's like, it's like so weird. I, I come from Puerto Rico. And so it's a colonized, it's a colony, it's a US colony. And so, but we speak Spanish and the expectation is like the Americans come in and like, you should speak English. And you're like, well, you know, we're, we're just a colony, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like, you know, we're, we don't have to. Like, but there's a lot of expectations are, you know, there's an immigrant there, that can be a culture shock to, you know, to make. Absolutely, you know? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's chat about Train to Moscow. Tell us a little about it. Um, well, it's my first novel. So I, after the two memoirs where mm-hmm. I exposed nearly every detail of my life, mm-hmm. <laughs> I turned to fiction. And um, this is a novel uh, that is set in Russia behind mm-hmm. the Iron Curtain during and after World War II. Mm. And it is, yeah, it is, it is about a rebellious girl from the provinces who strives to become an actress against her family wishes. Mm-hmm. And in that journey, she must battle oppressive politics of the Communist Party, um, an enigmatic lover turned political censor of her work and the buried secrets of her own family. Mm. So it, it's really about the conflict between the truth of art mm-hmm. and the official deluge of lies mm-hmm. that all Russians, including me and my family, had to live with. But, but it is truly a love story. It is a love for a man, for the arts, a love for truth. Mm-hmm. And um, just to, it's, it's really, I realize now it's a historical novel. <laughs> it turned mm-hmm. out to be. Um, I obviously didn't live through World War II Mm -hmm. or its aftermath. Uh, So I mind my family history, uh, including my older sister's acting career. She was a prominent actress in Leningrad, now St. Petersburg. And um, also the history, the stories of my two uncles who I never met because they, they were drafted into battle during World War II and they were killed they never came back Mm -hmm. um but they they were my mother's brothers um and um 
I just want to mention this, that World War II in Russia is known as the Great Patriotic War. Mm. And um, every, this is the statistic that I just learned myself recently. Yeah. Every, one out of every seven Russians was killed by the enemy during the oh war. Oh gosh. So because of this immense loss of life, um, the war was and still is the glue that has held the country together. And there is no family in Russia, none, uh, who didn't lose someone in the war. And, and my family was no exception. So I, I, I took you know, a lot of this family history and, and based some characters and some plot uh, developments on them. So did you plot this book or did you pants your way? Did you uncover, did you have an outline beforehand or did you uncover as you were writing the story, just uncover itself? Yeah, you know, I had, I, I tried to make an outline. Mm -hmm. I'm sort of a very, uh, well, I think of myself as an organized person and meticulous yeah. in some ways. Um, so I made an outline, but of course, as the story went on, as I wrote parts of the story, things changed and the characters asserted themselves and things happened that I didn't know would happen. Um, so it changed over time as I was writing it. And um, I don't know, obviously I don't know other people's processes, writing processes, but I think that's what happens a lot in writing, uh, in writing, especially in writing fiction, mm -hmm. because when you create a character, um, he or she sort of takes off <laughs> and does, they do their own things, these people on, on the page. So it was a fascinating, if frustrating, it was also a frustrating uh, process, but hugely rewarding. So at the end, um, at the end, I, you know, I, I felt, I felt, uh, felt for these people mm -hmm. and, uh, I wrote them and I wrote what happened to them, but they also sort of wrote their own story in a way. Yeah, I love the fact that sometimes writers uncover the characters and sometimes the writer wants the character to do something and the character tells you, no, I'm not doing that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you cannot pigeonhole me or you cannot make me do this or tell me to say something that it's not in my character, <laughs> you know? Exactly, exactly. And, and um um they they sort of uh they assert themselves and and or you you know when you reread it when you go back and to to revise edit you realize that this is false this is what what you wrote for this character the words that you put in his or her mouth are false mm -hmm. and you have to think of something else and rewrite it I love this and so tell us about a book that sparked joy for you over the past year or so you know well it is it is a book that was just published it's called our country friends by gary steingart um it is a pandemic novel and i'll <laughs> tell you in a minute why it sparked joy um it it is about the pandemic it is set during this pandemic uh, in 1920, I'm sorry, in yeah, I am still back. Well, well 19, 1920, we had the influenza or 1918. That's true. <laughs> so we had a pandemic yeah. during that time. So it's okay. A hundred years ago, we had a pandemic. Oh, so God. 2020, uh, we just got 2020. into it. So it's, <laughs> it's set in the spring of 2020 when we went into lockdown. And it is, um, it's a comic and set story. It's a tragic comedy. It has idiosyncratic characters. Um, it um, it's about eight friends who are quarantined or who quarantine themselves in this sort of estate uh, in the Hudson Valley that belongs to one of these people. Um, and the main character, whose estate it is, is a Russian. So <laughs> it's. <laughs> Just like the author, by the way, Gary Steingart came to this country when he was a child, when he was about seven or eight. And so did this character, the protagonist of the book. Uh, he's married to another ex-Russian um, who, who came as a child, came to this country as a child. And they there are eight friends who 
can you imagine they're just cloistered in this estate and, mm -hmm. and they are isolated? And of course, of course, things happen. Um, there are affairs, there is falling in love, there is betrayal. Mm -hmm. But the, um, the reason I think it, it will spark joy in any reader is that it gives hope. Mm -hmm. And in this, especially hope in these challenging times, um, it sort of says we're going through the dark period now, but light will return. Mm -hmm. Light will return if we reach for love and if we reach for art. Mm -hmm. So it is It is really, it's funny, it's sweet, it's entertaining, and it's a perfect novel for these times. Mm, I may pick it up. It's a weird thing. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for pandemic reading, but at the same time, I'm like, well, you know, it was like a weird time. So, you know, and I think it's interesting because we're sort of going back Backwards, but it feels like going backwards now like in the season it's just like I don't know I you know you you intrigue me with the pandemic but you know it's so. it's, it's very funny the Gary Steingart is a is a is a master of this uh, sort of tragic comedy mm -hmm. and it's very funny it's ironic uh it has a lot of allusions to to Russian writers and to to writers in general to writing um, and and it's it's things happen so quickly there, and yet there is such depth in mm -hmm. in what's happening that you really feel you know I I'm a visual person so I I, I go back and reread what I just read mm -hmm. because it's so rich mm -hmm. with um, with with allusions and and with with these themes you know it's so it's very multi layered. Oh, I love this. Um, I love this recommendation. I, you know, I'm like someone who's like, okay, I think it, it might be a good book to pick up. <laughs> you know, and it sparked joy for you. So I feel like it can spark joy for me. <laughs> so, um, so are you a reader? What kind of books do you read? Well, I, uh, I, I am a reader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But, you know, I was I was raised in Russia, and and we um, we were raised on Russian classics, obviously. Mm -hmm. We we read novels um, of Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. We read Crime and Punishment in ninth grade, for example, um, and Chekhov stories, of course. And um, there was a lot of poetry that was in the curriculum. And not only did we read poetry, we were told, uh, we, we had to memorize it. We mm -hmm. memorized poetry and we had to recite it in front of the class. Mm -hmm. And this sort of reciting poetry um, brought out rhythms and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the sound, the melody, the melodic part, mm -hmm. and also the rhyme, because all Russian poems of that period, at least, mm -hmm. rhymed. Mm -hmm. And Russian poets, poems of the classic poets, they all rhymed. So it was, it was really a... Uh, it was didactic on, on the one hand, you know, this education, but on the other hand, it was beautiful. And it really taught me to appreciate poetry. And I love poetry. I read a lot of poetry now. Um, so um, a lot of novels, stories, and poems. I love this. Yeah, I grew up with um, part of my secondary education. We did read poetry. We had to do, like, um, say it out loud. And so our what we had was a lot of African culture, um, African roots, and they're they're very like melodic, they're very musical, they're very like engaging in a sense of like this is who you are, you know. And so it just brought that memory for me. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, it's interesting, like we're separate, completely different cultures, and yet some of our education may look very very similar you know yeah, that is amazing sort of similar experiences yes yeah so you know it's like not the American experience you know <laughs> no 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 I know that because my daughter went through the American schools and she didn't learn one poem <laughs> yeah we did we we read a lot of Spanish classics like 
all the Spanish, like major Spanish books, like those were the ones we read, you know, and then we read some Shakespeare and some stuff, like, because we had some bilingual education, but the most part was Spanish classics that I grew up with. And so I love that you grew up with the Russian classics, you know, and that, that was part of the curriculum, you know, that was expectation. Tell us some books that you recommend for us, for our listeners to pick up. Well, I, 